I made a video game called Moto Knight, and I drew the entire thing on this tiny post-it note. From the player, to the environment, to the menu screens, down to the text itself. If you can see it in the game, you can find it crammed somewhere into this 3 inch by 3 inch piece of paper. And this isn't just some little experiment or game jam game, this is a full release that is getting published on Steam next month. You might be thinking, there is not a lot of stuff on this, how is this an entire game? Well, there are a couple tricks I used to make this all work. First of all, I drew all of the game art as small building blocks, which I could then use to build up into larger images. So for example, I didn't draw an entire brick wall, I just drew a single brick and then tiled it. Second, I drew sprites that could be used for multiple purposes. That brick texture that I just mentioned is also the head on the swinging hammers, as well as the buttons in the menu. They used this trick a lot in the old school NES games when memory was a limited commodity. And finally, I cut anything that I didn't need. Notice that I didn't draw the entire title font for Moto Knight just the seven letters that I actually needed. Okay, but I'm getting way too far ahead of myself. Let me rewind and tell you what Moto Knight is all about and why I decided to take on this dumb post-it note challenge in the first place. Moto Knight is a motocross trial style video game, kind of similar to Max Dirt Bike, the Trials series, or SpongeBob SquarePants Motocross. Oh my god, oh my but the fun twist on my game is that you play as a fantasy knight, trying to battle your way through these dark dungeons full of traps and hazards. So it's just a fun take on a classic genre. Honestly, I've always felt like this genre of game is super underutilized. It's such a fun base movement mechanic, but I feel like there's a ton of room left for innovation and creativity. I definitely want to make one of these games someday that involves combat, but for today, we're just going to keep it simple. So I started off by making a list of the bare minimum artwork I need to make this game work. And once I had that, I did a very rough sketch on a test post-it note, just just to get a sense for how it all fits together. Don't judge me on this one, it was just practice. I realized I actually had a lot of space left over, which I definitely wasn't expecting. So with that in mind, I started planning out the second post-it note, allocating more space for the higher detailed drawings, and adding in a couple items that I didn't think I would have room for. I was a lot more careful this time around, starting out with a pencil drawing and then going over it with a pen for the final line art. One issue that I came up against is the consistency of line thickness. If you draw two items with the same pen, but then you scale one of them up, the thickness of each line is going to be different, and then when you put them side by side, the artwork looks inconsistent and kind of messy. This might be kind of a smaller detail, but for me, inconsistent sprite scaling is one of the telltale signs of amateur game development, and I don't want my game to look like that. In order to prevent this, I deliberately used thicker lines on the sprites that I knew I was going to be scaling down, like the motorcycle. See how much better that looks? It's details like that that you all follow me for. Now that all the line art is done, I'm almost ready to start scanning it and putting it into my game. But I still do have a decent chunk of space right in the middle. I spent some time thinking about different things I could add to the game to fill it up, but then I had kind of a crazy idea. What if I added color? That probably doesn't sound too crazy, but let me explain why it is. Throughout this challenge, there were a lot of opportunities for me to kind of cheat a little bit. You know, technically, I could have just drawn a single circle onto a post-it note, turned that into a Photoshop brush, and then used that brush to draw 4K images and backgrounds and characters. Every image would have originated from that sticky note, right? But that's not what I was trying to do. I wanted everything that's in the game to exist visually somewhere on that notepad. So if I wanted variable colors in my sprites, I definitely could have just brought it into the game program, adjusted some sliders, and changed the hue of my color to what I needed. But for me, that feels like it's breaking the rules, because the color I end up with is not the color that's on the sticky note. So I kind of just wrote that all off and said that I was going to do a black and white game, which honestly I do really like the looks of, but then I had this idea. So if I use crayons to create color swatches on my sticky note, then I can put those swatches into the program, overlay them on top of a sprite, use a clipping mask to cut off the edges, and then I have different colors that I can apply to the same sprite without cheating on the arbitrary rules that I created and enforced on myself. And the best part about this is that now I can divide my game's levels into multiple visually distinct stages. Just look how good the red crayon looks as a sky. I love that. I'm super happy with the way this is turning out. So now the sticky note still has a couple square millimeters of space left over. I'm just gonna leave that there in case something pops up later in development. And now for the best part, I actually get to play my game. The Steam page for Moto Knight is live right now, so if this game looks interesting to you, go to Steam, search for Moto Knight, and my page should pop up. You can add it to your wishlist, and in a couple weeks, you'll be able to play it. And if you thought this game development challenge was fun, I did one a couple weeks ago where I made an entire game out of stolen pieces. You can check that one out here. I'll see you guys around next time. Bye.